Good morning, explorers. Welcome. I'm so excited to get to chat with all of you today. Welcome to our online academy. Um, today we are playing I Spy. So we're going to get to play a game where we're going to see some habitats and your job is going to be to find the animal in that habitat. Now, if you find the animal, you can yell it out. You can scream it out. You can act it out. You can also text us right here if you see the animal or if you have any questions about that animal. The number is 562-286-1838. Um, that way we can say hello to you live, hear what you think the animal is, um, and even answer your questions live right here um, on Monday morning. Now, if you're watching this not live at another time, then you can email us at live at lbaop.org. We'll do our best to respond to that email within a couple of days. So we look forward to hearing from you either right now on our text line or a little bit later on our email line. Now, like I said, we are playing I Spy. Now, I want you to think for a second about when you're searching for animals, what are some of the ways that you might be able to recognize that there's an animal there? Now, we're going to use our five senses. So what are those five senses? You might have heard these before. What are those five basic senses? Now, the first one I think that we're all thinking of probably is your eyesight. So we can see these animals, and that's the one we're going to be using primarily today. You can also hear the animals. Lots of animals make noises, and that's one way that we can find them. So we might be listening a bit. Um, you can smell animals. Now, unfortunately, you're not going to be able to smell any of the animals that we're seeing today. So uh, we're not going to be able to use that one. The other way is touch. So you might be able to touch things that are around you. So um, you can uh, here at the aquarium, if you've ever been to the aquarium, you might have gotten to touch a stingray or a jelly to see how they um, how they feel. And the final way that you can uh, see what is around you is through taste. That's your very last sense, is that sense of taste. So we have these five senses, sight, touch, taste, smell, and hearing. And today, like I said, we're going to be focusing on eyesight. We're going to be looking for things like colors, shapes, and patterns to see what it is that we're looking for. Now, a lot of the animals that we're going to be finding today are camouflaging. What does that word mean, camouflage? Have you ever heard that word? Camouflage. That means that they're using those colors, shapes, and patterns to blend in. So let's see what our very first animal is. Hmm. I spy a black and white animal. Do you see a black and white animal? This one's pretty easy. I bet you found this one right away. I, if you're thinking penguin, you are correct. These are our peng these are penguins. Here's one of our Magellanic penguins that you can see right here. Now, penguins have a black back and a white belly. And we talked a bit about camouflage. That coloration actually helps them to camouflage. So when these penguins are swimming through the water, the black back um, helps them to to blend in if they're swimming below a predator. So if a predator is above them looking down, that black coloration blends in with all the deep dark colors below them. Now if they are swimming up at the surface and an animal's looking up, that white belly is going to blend in with the light coming in from the surface. So these are actually camouflaging. I want to take a second to look for some other body parts on our penguin friend here. What other body parts do you see? I spy something that the penguin uses for feeding. What kind of body part is that? If you're saying beak, you are correct. The penguin uses this beak in order to catch their food. They even have this little hook at the end of that beak, and that hook is what they use um, to be able to grab onto slippery fish. So they love to eat things like small fish. They'll go out into the ocean, they'll find a school of fish, and they'll be able to use that beak to catch that fish. Now, I also spy a body part that the penguin uses for swimming. What body part do you see the penguin using for swimming? It uses these wings. So penguins are birds. Um, so they have a lot of, uh, they have the same body parts that other birds have, like wings and a beak. But they use those body parts a little bit differently. They actually have these wings to help them swim through the water. So they're not using them to, uh, to fly like a lot of other birds. They're using them for swimming. And then finally, I spy something that is covering this penguin. It's kind of tough to see, but look closely. 
Are they scales? Are they, is it fur? No, they're feathers. So penguins, like other birds, are covered in feathers. And those feathers actually help them to stay nice and toasty warm because they're really, really packed closely together and they trap a layer of air. And that air is kind of like a sweatshirt or a coat and it helps to keep you nice and warm and toasty. So that's how the penguin um, is able to stay warm. And you can actually see some bubbles coming off of them when they swim. That's that air escaping from underneath their feathers. Very good. So we were able to spy our first animal, a penguin. Let's see what other animals we can spy camouflaging. Oh, this one's a little tricky. I spy some animals swimming around, but I also spy some animals holding on to the grass. Do you see them too? If you're saying seahorse, you are correct. Look at these seahorses that are hiding on the seagrass. And then there's also a couple swimming around in the front here. Now, what do you notice about these seahorses? What do you see? Oh, wow, what a great picture of a seahorse for us. I spy a tail. Can you spot their tail? Look at that tail. Now, I notice that that tail is making a spiral. It's kind of twisting up. Why do you think it's doing that? Any ideas why it twists like that? Oh, maybe it's holding on. Let's go ahead. Let's look back at that video one more time and let's see if the seahorse is using its tail to hold on. Look at that. You are correct. If you're saying it's holding on, you are correct. That seahorse is using that tail to hold on. What else can we spy on our little seahorse friends? Mm, oh, we see this fin right here. Very good. What do we think they use that fin for? Maybe for swimming, you are correct. They're going to use that fin. They move it, and that's how they're able to swim. And if you look really closely, you'll see they have another fin right here. Can you make a little seahorse face with your little fins moving on the side of your face? Very cool. Wow, look at these seahorses hiding on a coral reef. I spy a seahorse right here. I spy some more over here. Look at all of these seahorses swimming on this coral reef. Now, the very last thing I spy is a very, very long mouth. Why do you think that a seahorse might have a very long mouth? Hmm. Oh, what a great picture. So it has this really, really long snout. And at the very end is its mouth. And it helps them to get their food. Because the seahorse camouflages, just like the other animals we've seen. It uses that camouflage to hide in the seagrass. And then when its prey swims by, it loves to eat little teeny tiny shrimp. So little teeny tiny shrimp will swim by. And the seahorse just opens its mouth just the tiniest bit. It goes boop, boop. Can you open your mouth like a seahorse? Just little teeny tiny bites. And that's how they're able to get their food. So that's called being an ambush predator. It means that they hide and they wait for their food to swim by. And then they surprise their food and they grab it. Let's go ahead and move your mouth like a seahorse one more time. Ready? There you go. Very good. And you can see these seahorses swimming around on our coral reef. Oh, and that one is holding on. Look at this one holding on right here. Very cool. So we have spied a couple of animals. Let's see if we can spy another animal. Ooh, this one's a little bit tricky. I actually spy, looks like four, five animals, six animals. The more I look, the more I find. And they live in shells. Can you find animals that live in shells? Do you see them? I also spy these animals that live in shells. They have a black part on their body. Do you see an animal with a black part on their body that lives in a shell? Are you pointing at this animal? Very good. This is an abalone. It is a type of snail. An abalone can get to be several inches long. So they can get to be pretty big. They live in a shell. Here's a great picture so you can see what they look like. They have this big, beautiful shell that helps to protect them. And then they have this sticky foot. So just like other snails that you've seen, they use that sticky foot to crawl along the floor. They move pretty slowly, um, but they live in ro on rocks and um, in like rocky areas and kelp forests. And they love to eat kelp. Now I also spy that this abalone has a couple of holes. So that's a normal thing for abalone. They've got a couple of just little openings to their shell. 
And on the inside, abalone have this really, really beautiful coloration. So um, they are an animal that lives here in Southern California in our tide, near tide pools um, or in kelp forests as well. Here's that one more view. Look at this abalone. Look at how great it's doing at camouflage. It can even start to grow some like algae and things on top of its shell to help it camouflage even better. Now, abalone is really special because abalone has no backbone. So I want you to reach around. We're going to use our sense of touch. Reach around and feel your backbone. Can you feel your backbone? That is because you are a vertebrate. So you are a vertebrate. You have a spine. You can sit up and down. You can walk around. You can move your arms. All these things that you can do with your spine. Abalone do not have a spine, um, but they can move in other ways. That's why they kind of crawl along on the seafloor. We're going to take a look at some other invertebrates, other animals without backbones. Oh, wow. I spy lots of animals here. Let's start with an animal that has five arms. I spy an animal that comes in lots of different colors. I spy some pink ones. I spy some orange ones. I spy some like peach ones, some purple ones. What animal do you see? Do you spy that same animal? If you're thinking of sea star, you are correct. There are lots of different types of sea stars. Looks like these ones are bat stars. So they have shorter arms and their arms are kind of webbed in between. So there are different types of sea stars. They come in different shapes, different colors, um, different sizes. Here's an ochre star. And look, it looks like it has little tiny white spots. If you were to touch this sea star using that sense of touch, you would notice that this sea star is very bumpy. So those bumps help to protect it. Now, I wonder if we might be able to see underneath a sea star so that we might be able to see its little tiny feet. Sea stars have little teeny tiny feet. So we're going to see if we can pull up a picture. But I want you to move all your fingers just like this. Move your fingers. That's kind of what a sea star is like underneath. They have thousands and thousands of tube feet. They're kind of like straws with suction cups at the end. Here's a view of those little tiny tube feet. And they're able to use those to hold on. That's how they hold on to the rocks. So they're able to move around and make sure that they're um, that they're holding on. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to text us. We'd love to answer any of your questions um, about the animals that we're looking at today. Now, I also spy something that looks a little bit different underneath the sea star. If you spy that same object, that's actually a sea star's stomach because the way that the sea star eats is it grabs onto an animal that lives in a shell, something like a clam or a mussel or a scallop, and it opens it up just a teeny tiny bit. And then once it's open, it spits its stomach out into the clam, makes a little clam smoothie, and then slurps its stomach back into its body. So the sea star um, is able to spit out its stomach, and that's actually what you're seeing is that stomach. You're seeing that stomach right there. Let's go back to our tide pool, see if we can spy any other animals. Sure. I spy an animal that kind of looks like a plant, kind of looks like a flower, but it is an animal. Uh, it is colorful. I see a pink one. I see a white one. And it looks like it's moving with the water. I spy these sea anemones. Look at these sea anemones. Can you move your fingers like a sea anemone? So they have these tentacles. Those are your little fingers. They have these tentacles all around the outside of the sea anemone. And that's what they use to catch their food. So those tentacles have little tiny singing cells on them. And they use those singing cells to grab onto food. So maybe things like small fish or crabs or whatever animals might happen to crawl across those tentacles. And then once it's grabbed on, it closes it up and it brings the food to its mouth. That's the mouth right there. So it brings the food into its mouth, digests that food, and it's able to eat it right there in that mouth. Now, sea anemones live in tide pools like this. And if you look really closely, you might be able to see... Um, kind of where their foot is. So they have a foot kind of like a snail, except their foot just holds on. Remember, snails are able to crawl with their foot. Sea anemones only hold on with their foot. So they're able to grab onto the rocks or the walls of a tide pool and hold on, and then they'll live in that same place um, forever. 
Oh, very cool. Here's one that's closed up. So this one looks like it just finished a big meal. So it's all closed up right now. They'll also close up sometimes um, at low tide when the water goes down. They'll close up like that. And that's why you might see them at the beach all closed up. They're holding on to their water so that they can stay cool throughout the day. Now, I spy another animal in here hiding. This one is a little bit tough to see because there's only a couple of them in here. But it is purple and it has spikes. Can you find a purple spiky animal? If you're looking at this sea urchin here, you are correct. There's another one right here, it looks like. So these are purple sea urchins. They're related to sea stars and they use those spines to help protect themselves. So you can imagine if you were an animal and you were looking for a snack, you probably would not want to eat this sea urchin because it has all these spikes, which are, um, would be pretty difficult to eat. Here's an example of a sea urchin. You can see all these long spines that they use for protection. Now, underneath the sea urchin, they have a mouth um, that they'll, they use to eat little bits of seaweed. So they'll eat like this seaweed here, and they use that mouth to chew up little pieces of seaweed. Um, they love to eat especially seaweed like kelp, like we find here in Southern California. Let's see if we can spy another animal. What animal is that? This animal is actually moving. Now, it doesn't have any audio, but I think if you, um, if it did, it looks like it's probably making some noises. You probably would be able to hear it, but I don't think we have any, any audio on this one, but you can see that frog is moving around. Now, what else do you notice about this frog? What else do you see? I see that it has some little white spots on the top that helps them with their camouflage. It helps to kind of break them up. Oh, wow. Look at that face. Let's just take a minute to appreciate how cute this little frog is. I noticed that this frog is a bright green color, so it probably lives somewhere that has a lot of leaves that it can blend in with. I also noticed that its skin looks kind of wet, right? So frogs live in really kind of wet environments. They keep their skin pretty moist. And you notice that it has a really, really big mouth for eating their food. Very cool. Let's see what other animals we can spy. Ooh, this one's tricky. We see some sea anemones down here. We see some sea stars, but we already talked about both of those. I see some seaweed right here, but that's not an animal. We're looking for animals today. Hmm, do you see an animal? We'll get that text number back up here. If you see an animal, text us and tell me what animal you see other than our sea stars and our sea anemones. Hmm, are you looking in this corner up here? Very good. We got a couple of texts saying that there's an octopus in here. Very good. So there uh, is an octopus hiding in this habitat. Now, octopus are the masters of camouflage. We're talking all about camouflage today. Octopus are excellent at camouflaging, and that's because they're able to change their color and their texture so they can change their appearance to match their habitat. Um, and you can see this is a great close-up view of our octopus right now. You can see he's kind of got a a bumpy texture right now. Awesome. Look at those suction cups. They use those suction cups to hold on just like the um, sea star uses its tube feet. Now let's watch this octopus as it camouflages. So it looks like it starts out kind of a dark color. What color is it now? Wow. And it's still changing color. Very cool. Let's watch that video one more time because I think that was so impressive to see that color change. And then at the end, we also saw that texture change. So it starts out as kind of a really dark red color. It turns into a lighter red. And then you start to see spots of white developing. And then it gets bumpy. Look at it. It's all of a sudden bumpy to match the rocks that it's blending in with. 
Now, octopus can camouflage so well that sometimes you can know exactly where they're hiding. And if you look away and you look back, you might not be able to find them because they're so good at camouflaging. Like I said, they can change their texture so they can go from being bumpy or to being smooth. Um, they can also change that coloration. And they do that by, um, they have these little cells on their body and they can uh, change their colors using those cells by expanding and contracting those cells. What else do you spy about this octopus? We saw these suction cups that they use for holding on. I spy this eye. That was a really close-up view of their eye. And look at this view of those suction cups. They're very, very strong. They use them to grab onto their food. Um, they also, here at the aquarium, will use them to... Uh, mess with the people that are trying to clean their exhibits. So we have scuba divers that get into the exhibits um, a couple times a week to scrub all of the rocks and make sure the exhibits stay nice and clean. And they have to bring a couple of different scrub brushes with them because if the octopus decides that they want to use one of those scrub brushes as a toy, then the scuba diver will not get that scrub brush back until the octopus is done playing with it. So they'll use that scrub brush. Um, the octopus will grab it and then they'll grab a different scrub brush. Maybe the octopus will steal that one too. Um, one time they even stole the shoe off of one of our divers and then our diver had to get out of the water because that water is very very cold very good what else do you notice about this octopus i see it has a really really large head octopus are what's called cephalopods so that means that the head means or cephalo means head. So what they do is they have all of their organs are up in that head area. So instead of having an abdomen like you and I have, um, they have that head area. It's called a mantle. And that's where all of their, um, that's a great view of it. That's where all their organs are. And then of course they have their eight arms. Um, actually, this is a great view. Let's count these arms. Let's see if we can count them. Ready? There's one, two, three, four, five, six, looks like one of them is not visible, seven, and then I think there's eight behind it. Um, very good. So they've got these eight arms with suction cups all the way down. Now octopus, like the sea stars, come in lots of different shapes and sizes and colors. They can be very, very large or they can be very, very small. Um, they can be different colors. They live in the deep sea. They live in tropical oceans. They live in places like Southern California. They can be found in lots of different types of habitats. Yeah, let's see another video of an octopus. We're going to check out another video of octopus because these are one of our favorite animals here at the aquarium. Oh, this is one of our, um, this is our day octopus going for a little snack. So there is, a, that's a toy boat and there's some food hidden in that toy boat. So it grabs that toy boat brings it back down to um, its home, and then we'll work on trying to get that food out of there. So octopus are very, very smart. Um, this is also a great example of octopus that can live in different habitats. So earlier we saw a cold water octopus. This is an octopus, a day octopus that lives in warm water. So it's found in, um, in different types of habitats. Now we're gonna go ahead and see another camouflaged animal. Kind of camouflaged. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, perfect. Look at that. These are one of my favorite animals here at the aquarium. Do you see them down here? They are like little lumps. They're called lump suckers. That's where they get that name from. There's another one back here. And you can tell they're actually really, really bad swimmers. So we think that usually fish are going to be really great at swimming. Lump suckers are not very good at swimming. You can see they've got these little teeny tiny fins, so they're not very good swimmers. Their body's also kind of a strange shape for swimming. So instead, they have um, uh, this appendage basically underneath their body that they use to hold on to rocks and to surfaces. That's a great view. So it's basically like their fins that they're able to use to hold on. Um, that's why they're called lump suckers. And that, and they're able to suck onto rocks so that they can hang on. Um, and that way when waves and currents come through, they're able to stay safe and they don't spend very much time swimming. They also camouflage. Look at how their texture is helping them to camouflage with the rocks. 
And these are probably an animal that um, that we might not have seen before because they're pretty uh, different. They're one of our favorite animals here at the aquarium. And like I said, they are fish. Um, they're called spiny lump suckers. Now we're going to use our last couple of minutes to take a look at one of our aquarium webcams and see what other animals we can spy living in our webcam. Oh, cool. So this is Shark Lagoon. This is our shark exhibit. So you might be thinking, well, I'm obviously going to spy some sharks, but I spy an animal in here that is not a shark. In fact, it has a shell and it's a reptile. Can anyone spy a reptile in this exhibit? If you're talking about that sea turtle that just swam all the way off the edge of the camera, you are correct. We'll wait and see if we can find that sea turtle again. It might swim back into view. Um, so we do have a sea turtle that lives here. So it just swam by. Oh, looks like we're going to go back in time a little bit. Rewind this live video to see our sea turtle swimming. Um, our sea turtle is an olive ridley sea turtle. There it is right back here. This is an olive ridley sea turtle and they do have a shell that helps to protect them. So it's a protective shell. I also spy that it has fins. So if you've seen a turtle that lives on land, you might know that they have kind of feet for walking around. Turtles that live in the ocean, sea turtles have these long fins that they use for swimming. Now let's talk about some of the sharks in here since that turtle keeps swimming away. Uh, I spy, let's see. What can we spy? I spy a couple of sharks actually in here that have gray bodies, but they have a really special um, characteristic on their gray body, and that is a black part of their fin. Can anyone spy a shark with a gray body and a black fin? <laughs> uh, there is one in the very, very back. These are our black tip reef sharks. We've got one back there. I think we've got one. Oh, there's our sea turtle came back just now. So these are black tip reef sharks. These are a, a really typical shark to find on coral reefs. Um, oh, there's another one right there. Remember how we talked about that counter shading that the penguin had by having a dark top of their body and a light underside? The black tip reef sharks have that same type of counter shading. So they've got that black or darker top side and lighter belly, like a lot of the sharks that we see here. Now I spy a shark that keeps swimming by. It has a very, very long tail and it has spots on its body. There it is, right there. Great sighting if you notice that shark. Now, I'm going to say the name of this shark and you might be a little bit confused because this shark is called a zebra shark. Now, you might be thinking, that shark definitely had spots and I know that zebras have black and white stripes. Well, when the zebra shark is born, they have black and white stripes on their body. And then as they grow and get bigger, those stripes stretch out and then they turn into spots. Um, so we call them zebra sharks here. In other parts of the world, they are called leopard sharks, though, which probably makes a little bit more sense. There it is hiding. Now, one of the special things about this zebra shark, you can see its fins just kind of popping up there. Hello gray reef shark. Um, you can see the fins popping up there. Zebra sharks are able to rest on the seafloor. So they're able to lay on the seafloor and then pump water over their gills so that they can keep breathing. That's a very special skill that zebra sharks have um, that a lot of other sharks do not have. So that's why that zebra shark was able to disappear behind that coral. Now I also spy lots of um, fish swimming around, lots of tropical fish. So we do have several types of tropical fish, um, some tangs, some unicorn fish. They're swimming around here in this exhibit. Um, here's some other tropical fish that we can see. These ones are clownfish. You notice they've got stripes on the sides of their body to help them to blend in with their habitat here. So these fish, as well as the ones we were just looking at, were tropical, meaning that they're found in warm waters um, in places like Southeast Asia or Hawaii or Florida, places that have warm water and coral reefs. Well, explorers, I have had so much fun playing I Spy with you today. We have gotten to find so many different animals that live in lots of different types of habitats. So thank you so much for learning with me and exploring with me. Um, we are going to be back here at 10 o'clock with another session, so just 30 minutes. So we hope to see you joining us at 10 o'clock to talk all about um, 
uh, food webs in the ocean. So we hope to see you back here at 10. If not, we'll see you on Wednesday. We do have a class on Wednesday in Spanish um, and then on Friday as well. Thank you and have a great rest of your day and have a happy Thanksgiving.